something medical career, but I did not think I was, uh, I didn't want to do direct patient care. So I was going through different colleges, different catalogs, and I found a degree for medical technology. It's all working in the laboratory using science and, but still being able to be in a hospital or a clinical setting where you're helping patients, but not directly. Uh, second question, Amanda, how hard were the science and medical laboratory courses you took in college? They were, um, they're pretty difficult at times. I would say they are doable for people that are passionate about science. I wouldn't say that I am 100% really good at chemistry, but I was able to make it through. And it's actually kind of funny that you asked that because in high school on my, uh, the ACT, my science was actually my lowest score. So when I told my parents I wanted to go into clinical laboratory science, they said, Amanda, are you sure? <laughs> and I said, I think so. I really enjoy science and I might have scored lowest on it, but it worked out for me. I've been in the clinical laboratory field for five years now, and I don't feel like that ever hindered me. Tell me about the laboratory internship. Was it scary? Did you learn a lot? Yeah, so I went to Mercy School of Clinical Laboratory Science. It was a challenging year. I will not lie. It was exactly um, 48 weeks, so just about a year of five days a week. 7.30 to 4, we would show up, um, we would do a lot of classroom time for the first four to five months, and then the, the last uh, five or six months, we were directly in the laboratory with people training us and showing us what we learned in the classroom, and then we were applying it there on the actual bench um, in the laboratory. So Amanda, what's the best part of working in a hospital laboratory? The best part about working in the lab, I think, is seeing when you're actually helping the patient, sometimes you'll get a hematology slide where you're, you're looking at the inside of somebody's body, you're looking at their blood, and you can see all of these different things that's going on with them. You could see lots of white blood cells, meaning they have an infection, you could see that their um, red blood cells are too small or too big, or they're not the right size. And you can, I just think it's so neat that you can see the, what's going on with them by just a drop of their blood. It's actually really amazing. And that just skims the surface of what we do in the laboratory. But and there's blood bank where you're giving people blood products, you're saving their life. And um, we do, I know I said it's not direct patient care, but we are really helping the patients. 80% of what the doctors, how they treat a patient is based off of clinical testing. And what's the worst part? about working in a hospital laboratory? Hmm, that one's hard. I think sometimes it, it is not always just science. Uh, we have to work with all the departments in the hospital and sometimes we have an idea of what we need to do. They have an idea of what they need to do and sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes we don't get a good specimen for any number of reasons and we have to tell them we can't run it and they or run the test and they aren't, they're upset about that, which is, you know, fair because they have to go back and tell that patient we've got to get another urine specimen, we have to get another blood specimen, and that's not fun for them, and it's not fun for the patient, and I, it's not fun for us either, but that's just part of working in the laboratory, but there are also great parts, like I said before, so. Think back to your, your high school and college science courses. How do you use that science in your career as a medical laboratory scientist? Um, the courses that I took in high school that probably helped the most were uh, anatomy, biology, um, chemistry, and really the course in college that put everything together before I started my clinical rotations was a physiology class. So that really took physics that I had taken, it took biology, chemistry, and it put it all together of how everything works in the body. And I, that, that's why I really like clinical laboratory sciences because I feel like biology and chemistry is almost like a story within the body of this happens within your body and it causes this to happen and it causes this to happen. And this is why this test could be high and causes this other test to be low. And it's actually really neat, but physiology for me was one of them that really um, started to make, <laughs> everything started to make sense of why I took all the classes before that. <laughs> 
All right. So Amanda, if you, if you had to give one piece of advice to someone considering a career in the medical laboratory, what would that one piece of advice be? Oh gosh, that's a hard one, Gary. I'm trying to think one piece of advice. One piece of advice that I could give for anybody looking into clinical laboratory science is that it is an amazing job. I enjoy it and I love it. If you get in there and you don't want to do this for 30 plus years like some, it is a great stepping stone to anything else. Um, I was told once that your clinical laboratory rotation that you do is actually like your the first year of med school. Um, so if you wanted to go to med school, you already, you've already taken a whole clinical laboratory science rotation. You know all of that. You would be starting med school with a step up. Um, I just was able to get my master's with BJC, um, and I, I'm not sure what I want to do with it, but I was able to do that with this job because of the, you can do different shifts. You can work night shift, you can work evening shift, you can work day shift. And they worked with us to be able to get, you know, move around our days, get time off to do that. Um, it was quite, it was very financially viable. <laughs> um, we were able to do that. I, I think if you want to do clinical laboratory science, it, it would be a great, it's a great job. And then it's a great gateway for other careers as well, if that's not exactly what you want to do forever. Um, so that's, that's what I can say. I know you work at BJC Healthcare. How do they support your professional growth and development? Okay, so BJC, like I just said, um, they uh, offer different type of master's degrees. They offer people who are MLTs, so they have their two-year associates. They just brought in this new degree you can go to SIUE and get your MT. Um, at BJC, they do pay a little bit more for having your MT. Um, they have a bunch of online education sources that I actually just signed up for, for Excel, Outlook. Um, they've got a resiliency training and anybody can go on and sign up for these and do online courses. I actually just signed up for some Excel courses because I feel like um, I don't, I haven't been using it a lot and I've lost some of my skills. So I just went and signed up for that. So I'll do that in my free time, maybe at work or here at home. So they really do um, advocate for continuing education as well as for your own personal development. How much tuition reimbursement do they provide? My master's has cost $2,200 for a master's of healthcare administration. Have you done any COVID testing? And if so, tell us about it. Yes, we do COVID testing at Missouri Baptist. Uh, if you are in college or even in high school, we do COVID testing using the polymerase chain reaction, PCR. I think it's actually really cool to think about. It's not hard to set up at all. It's you, you just take the little nasopharyngeal swab liquid that they like shove all the way up <laughs> to the back of your brain. It feels like it's not really your brain. And then um, we take that liquid, we put it into a cartridge and we load it onto an instrument. But what that instrument is doing is it has a different target DNA or RNA strips that it is using to match with anything, any viral DNA that it finds in that swab or that liquid. And it will replicate that hundreds of millions and millions of thousands <laughs> of times in order to be able to detect um, the virus is present or not present within that person. And have you personally done those tests? I have, yeah, we have a couple different tests that we do. Um, one's like a quick antigen test that takes 15 minutes. It's not as sensitive. So it'll only pick up uh, if you have COVID about 80% of the time. And then the PCR one that I just talked about takes about 50 minutes to um, not to set up to run. And they're, they're not hard to set up at all. We do it under and it's not not safe. I've, I've never not felt safe or exposed. We all have our lab coats on. We have our gloves on. Um, we have our mask on, of course, and we do it under a ventilated hood. So everything's under the hood and it takes up all of the particles and it vents them out in a way. And then we clean it with uh, special bleach and then alcohol. And then we have this new special liquid that we have to clean up before and after we set up each test as well. And we throw air gloves. In the last 12 months, just estimate for us, how many COVID tests have you personally done? Oh, uh, I would believe, I mean, any, any shift that I work, I, I can set up anywhere between five to 10 
and that's just me. There's other people also setting up probably five to 10. I, I would say, um, oh gosh, I, I couldn't even count a lot. <laughs> Finally going down. Um, we're not setting up near as many. And and then the last question, describe for us a typical shift for you when you go into your hospital laboratory. So a typical shift, I work night shift and I love it. Um, it's a very intimate shift. There's only four of us working. So we get to know each other really well. It's usually a little slower and we do maintenance. Um, so we'll come in and ask our, any of our fellow evening shifters, how are you doing? Do you need help with anything? And if they do, then we'll help them. If not, We'll start to um, restock supplies, uh, gather um, gather supplies that we'll need for maintenance. So that, that can be like bleach or alcohol swabs and we clean it all the while. Um, we're, we're multitasking all the time. So that's why I love this job. I'm always on my toes. I'm always working. I'm never bored. I don't like to sit around and be bored. Um, <laughs> uh, and we go and we clean our instruments. We're releasing patient results. We're calling critical results. And then in the morning, it's actually some of our busiest times is around 4 a.m. is when they start doing all the hospital draws for all of our inpatients. So we're, we're focused a lot on just patient testing there in the morning, starting at about 4 a.m. And that's calling, um, calling criticals, releasing results that hold up in our system. And uh, yeah, that's, that's just basically making sure our instruments are running well. All of our quality, quality control is um, acceptable.